So how, how did you get to shamanism from um, left field indie rock? Well, do you know what? I think there's quite a big crossover with music and, and shamanism to a degree. In my band, like dreams have always really influenced the lyrics. Sometimes melodies have arrived in dreams, but more often than not, like imagery of dreams have, have like found their way into lyrics. So I guess that was, you know, a start of, of getting into it. But um, I think, you know, the shamanic archetype is something that is across the, the globe. And even though we don't sort of have that in our culture anymore, I think in some performers, you can kind of see that energy. And it's almost like representing something that we haven't quite fully reconnected to in our society because you, you know when um, you're at a gig and you're playing and <laughs> or even watching when somebody's like well like a great performer when they're in a state of presence like true presence there's something that um so when you're performing I bet like you know I think you understand that like reality kind of shifts when you're doing a gig doesn't it like at least the good ones you know mm. this is what happens <laughs> to me you sort of I mean I guess it's almost like a trans state but it's if I think it's something even bigger than that like your awareness can shift and time sort of dissolves so that you know an eternity can happen in a song like I, I assume you've had those kind of experiences yourself yeah. right yeah completely I mean I've, I've been fascinated by this topic for a long time but it was, right. it's, this is a great opportunity to speak to somebody who's actually studied right. it as well. So yeah. those parallels between music and performance fascinate me. So, so in a way, for you, it was a way of reconnecting and and discovering something that's inherent in our culture, but we sort of lost touch with. Well, we killed all the witches. <laughs> <laughs> great I mean, song I title. <laughs> I think that's something I'm sort of a little bit like, you know, uh, well, I'm very aware of. The word shaman is from the Tungus tribe in Siberia. Actually, each indigenous culture has a different name for this for a similar role. You know, so that I don't know why we've chose to use that one to describe it all. But in each indigenous culture, there's a different there's a different name for it. Um, and yeah, I just think, you know, that it's something to be very aware of that, you know, colonialism destroyed a lot of people's lands and indigenous cultures, as did as we killed ours, you know, so like we don't have the, that kind of lineage or heritage anymore. I mean, some people kind of do. But yeah, so that's just something that I'm kind of aware of. But, you know, even while I was playing bands, I was still sort of it was even though I didn't have the language for it at the time, I think it's always been quite a spiritual thing for me. And so, you know, while I was playing music, I did start to sort of, you know, explore different aspects of my, of, of all of that. And um, shamanism was one of the things that I came across. The last couple of years I was playing in, well, the last few years I was playing in, in, this, in Sea Witches, uh, I started doing journeying. Um, but I didn't actually know what it was at the time. <laughs> so shamanic journeying is um, its kind of like dreaming while you're awake. There's a crossover, but I think it's very different. So like vis visualizations when you meditate, I think when you journey, it's, it's something different. So I started to do, I did that every day for about two years, but while I was doing it, I didn't really know what, what it was. <laughs> and then I kind of discovered you know what it was as I went along so I did that every day for two years and I was doing it without a drum but then you know some people use the, the beat of like the monotonous beat of a drum or the circular sound of rattles that kind of helps shift your state of consciousness so that you can more e easily access these different um well depending who I'm speaking to I describe this thing in different ways so I think I used to I would used to have said it's like you know using your active imagination so Carl Jung would describe as you know using your active imagination when you sort of like go in yeah like a dream state but while you're awake but the more I sort of dive into it it kind of feels more like you're accessing different planes of, of reality that are sitting on this one but we just can't see them and then in our mind's eye we're sort of interpreting these different sort of energetic planes of reality so yeah as I, I started to do that and like so what I learned from doing that was sort of as I would ch change and have these experiences on my inner landscape, it would directly affect 
what was happening on on the out on my outside uh, reality. Um, in, in what kind uh, of ways? Well, helping to like like heal things, I guess. I mean, I, I think the thing that I remember most significantly is when when one setup of the band kind of fell apart. I was doing this journeying and like I, it was almost like something I had this experience in a journey and something literally fell apart but I kind of you know managed to to deal with it in a grounded way and then and then the band <laughs> fell apart <laughs> after that which is kind of what needed to happen it wasn't necessarily a bad thing but I don't know it didn't feel like a coincidence and having those sort of tools available to me at the time definitely helped me stay more grounded and more present so as much as this stuff can kind of sound quite like you know all up here and detached a little bit for me these practices help me sort of come into my body more and become more prep more present you know um but so so yeah it, it helped me through like certain shifts so there's there's a lot of different types of shaman, shamanism i'm guessing there's um uh, the stuff i've read yeah. about is when the shaman in these cultures takes on animal forms and right. there's and also they they there's a hallucinogenic experiences to it as well and it's and this is this is all about getting in touch with the subconscious or to get in touch with all the different planes of consciousness yeah. so how, how would you explain those parts um, well, I don't think it's every culture that has, uh, that uses psychedelics. I mean, some of them do, it is common, but I don't think it's like, necess you know, I don't think it's necessary on someone's path to do that. I think, you know, I mean, I haven't had ayahuasca, but I'd be, I'd be open to having that experience. But yeah, in terms of like, them actually becoming the animals, like, who knows like I, I kind of feel like our perception of reality how we're sort of brought up if we were taught to see things differently because as children I wonder how much we would actually see if that would shift how we actually saw the things around me so as to whether somebody actually turns into an animal or not I <laughs> I don't know <laughs> You know, that's not where I'm at. I mean, I've contacted, you know, animals in journeys, but not, and you know, I work with like animal spirits, but I haven't, you know, haven't yet. And not as far as I know, you know. For you, what, what would the ritual be to get into the place, to get into the zone? To go on a journey, for, to go on a journey. Um, I don't really think you need anything other than just to help like clear your mind do you know what I mean like or just clear the clutter because I think you know a lot of our thoughts aren't our own a lot of the thoughts we pick up on are other people's or just when we've been on the internet or whatever so I think you know it's trying to sort of breathe deeply and clear out so that I can yeah you know get into I mean a drum has helped me in the past um I still use a drum um I've been doing some like sound meditations where I'm using my voice and the drum and rattles and things in a different way but going out into nature as well like you know sitting with the trees learning to communicate with the land and, and trees is another really important aspect of it for me I sometimes use essential oils like frankincense can help sort of open up your third eye so that you, if you're wanting to sort of you know use your inner sight that can be something good to do but I, I think on a simple level it's just like yeah grounding and, 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 breathe, and breathing I mean before I got into this for a long time well I still do practice yoga every day you know um so I know that definitely helps I, I often think um this is my little pet theory about things but the, the universe makes a note and it's 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 the note to be flat or something and it's it's like a drone an eternal drone um, this is the power of music, you know, music, all music, all great music has a drone in it. And it's a way of of joining in with the universe subconsciously. Now, is right. shamanism and breath work and, and this this kind of getting immersed in nature and communicating with nature, is that part of that process? And in a way that uh, in our lives, we float above, we think we float above the universe and the universal. But really, if, if we can open these little portals and get back join in again it actually does us a lot of good and, and do you think this is part what you're doing is part of that process in a sense yeah yeah definitely I mean I think that 
the main intention that I have through all of this, you know, for my myself and if I do help other people along the way is like to remember who I am beyond my conditioning, you know, like because we take on so many layers of a lot of BS conditioning <laughs> from word go with how our society is set up. Um, and so I think a big part of it is just sort of like, yeah, peeling back all of that to sort of come to remember that, you know, I'm something different. We all are something different and more powerful and beautiful than what we've been perhaps <laughs> told we were, you know, like ev everyone. But I mean, I mean the, the classic, Sam yeah. drum is meant to be like the, heart, the similar beat to the beat, like the pulse of the earth and stuff like that. So I guess it's about, you know, connection, isn't it? Like a connection to yourself, who we really are and a connect, you know, and for me, that goes to, to nature. So like one of the things that, like one of the next projects I'm kind of working on, I've started working on it already is like when I'm sitting out with the trees I'm I'm singing and I'm going to record myself singing when I'm out and just sort of see what you know what comes through when I've got into a quiet space and record like a sound piece based on on that um, oh, that's, yeah that sounds amazing when, when you feel in touch with nature and you feel the energy of the trees is it something that can be described or is it something that's so subconscious that you just know without there are no words, it's beyond words, beyond language. Yeah, well, you can try to um, describe these things in words, can't you? Um, mm. But I think you can better describe them in poetry and, and sound, you know, because then that's like the language of your heart, isn't it? So, you know, because a lot of things, when we try to understand it with our mind and, and words, there's a limitation as to what can be perceived when you're just sort of like thinking of things in your mind so yeah you can attempt to communicate these things but usually what gets closer to describe those experiences is poetry art and music and sound so the, the classic image of a, of a shaman is somebody in a village who's like the village doctor in a sense you know and the person who goes beyond to ask the gods for cures or or you know speak or or the Delphic Oracle, somebody can see into the future, et cetera, et cetera. Is that part of it or is that something that's a very different part of a different side? Yeah, I mean, well, I kind of think, I think everybody can use shamanic techniques in, to bring about self-healing and like get help, get guidance. Like everybody can learn how to do shamanic journaling. Everybody can connect with nature. Um, some people that I've, so I, I wouldn't call myself a shaman I'd say I'm using shamanic techniques I'm not gonna you know I wouldn't make any claims like that but you know um I think maybe a shaman is perhaps somebody who bridges these different worlds and brings back healing for other people by sort of you know bridging these different worlds but um that's just one take of take on it you know I think there's um so like the, the Toltec people from Mexico and South Africa that I think their word for shaman I think you say it's nagul or something like that um but the meaning of the word is is divinity in all things but it also means so the same word means shaman so they sort of see it as the shaman is somebody who realizes that there is divinity in all things you know in everything that is alive all humans or animals or plants or trees the earth and that the shaman yeah so the shaman's someone that sees that so from that respect everybody could become a shaman if they can get into that understanding and also understanding that this reality is, is a dream and a, and a bit an, of an illusion but obviously even when you come to that awareness you carry on dreaming but you just sort of like your perceptions and things about the world around you can can shift so yeah learning about that I thought that that was kind of quite a beautiful take on mm. <laughs> on it um but I think there are are many so yeah I guess there's a lot of different ideas though for the same word and you know maybe if you ask me on another day I might have a different <laughs> answer but that's <laughs> I think that's my answer for today <laughs> I, I really like this idea I like this idea that that far far away from being esoteric, that shamanism is actually a a reality, and the reality that we perceive is actually the illusion. So it's actually the other way around. Yeah, 
yeah yeah no well like the, the aboriginal um the aboriginal is called dream time like the all of once time all at once time mm -hmm. um and so i think some of them would say that that reflects the greater reality re greater reality more clearly than than this one but you know i i don't know i'm still figuring these things out <laughs> as i'm sure i will be for the, <laughs> the rest of my days but i mean i think i get a gr the greatest sense of reality is you know when you become fully present because when you're fully present you kind of yeah you're just more aware of more things aren't you <laughs> but you know I, I think dreams are also like a fascinating a fascinating phenomena and something really important in a lot of different um shamanic traditions like i i've kept a dream journal for many years now and it's something that you know helps me so have your have your dreams changed since you got deeper into the practice they have I've, had, I've gone through like phases with it with dream with dreams I mean I've had some really um because sometimes I feel like some dreams it feels like you're at you are actually in another place you know some dreams you've eaten something funny and then had some bad dreams as a consequence but more often than not I think there's more going on um I mean I remember when I first started to keep a dream journal I had because I mean a lot I mean I don't lucid dream very often it is something that happens occasionally but you know I know people that do it all the time you know um but yeah I've had I've had some strange experience in dreams I had one there was one time where I, I fell asleep in a dream and then woke up in what seemed like another reality which kind of freaked me out at the time because it felt like it was more real than than this <laughs> space but I haven't had that experience since. <laughs> I would, I would, I'd like to, I'm sure that things like that might happen uh, again. But I think, you know, f at the moment, and I've kind of been focusing on, yeah, like journeying and, and sitting with nature more than, well, I'm still keeping a dream journal. But I think I've always had quite vivid dreams and I've always been quite lucky to, you know, remem remember them. And I've always never, I've never bought into the thing that, you know, we're sort of told, oh, it's just a dream, it doesn't matter. I. I don't see it like that. I think sometimes it's our subconscious or, or you know, higher self or however you want to see things is, is communicating with us. So like some <laughs> dream teachers think that, you know, if you get to the point where you're having a nightmare, it's because you haven't been paying attention and that somebody's trying to like, you know, <laughs> shake you into sort of paying attention to something that is, that's perhaps been a, in a, a blind spot in your conscious day to day but there's that it's telling you something that you need to pay attention to um because a lot of people don't remember the dreams at all you know which i think is um but i think everybody can if they set an intention to mm. if they want to because yeah that you know the the <sighs> lots of amazing things like musical pieces, scientific discoveries and all this. There's a whole history of like all these phenomenal things that have happened through people recalling their, <laughs> their, their dreams. Mm. Um, so yeah, I don't know if they, I, they yeah, I guess they changed to a point, but I still feel like I'm, tr you know, wanting to fall deeper into it all a little bit more, even, you know, even while I'm staying grounded of course but like I had one experience where it was almost like in a dream state and I I remembered a connect like like a soul connection to somebody else and what I realized from from that information was that if, if like I said before if it wasn't for our conditioning to how we see reality I think the experiences that we'd have would be you know are probably unimaginable <laughs> like unimaginable <laughs> to us because um yeah you know when you look at loads of different like even in this even the history of the cultures from you know like celtic culture and stuff like that with all different kind of seers and things like that it's just um mm. yeah that is exactly a lot of the problems and we always say it's done with the problems in the west are because we became very detached from everything didn't we we became yeah. detached from the planet came detached yeah. from ourselves came detached from nature and this yeah. is a way of re in a sense reconnecting i guess and yeah. and subconsciously you found that in music initially you know that's an interesting yeah. journey 
yeah well it still is you know like I'm still writing um music and doing the you know as well as doing the sound pieces um and I've started doing sort of shamanic healings and I do use like my drum and my voice in in that because I think you know it it clears and shifts stagnant energy um the the vibrations of, of the sounds you know I guess I don't know who would be listening to this but I know a lot of people are skeptical when you start talking about the spirit world divinity and all of this and I kind of get that because I think I used to be you know I, it, it's taken I've been on quite a journey to get to these this point to be using this language to be talking about these things but if if someone is skeptical I mean obviously that's fine but I think when you look at quantum physics like cutting edge quantum physics it's mind-bending and in some ways it's sort of some there's a crossover between these like ancient culture cultures and myst, mystics and the information and knowledge that they have had for eons the things that you know cutting edge quantum physicists are discovering sort of you know like cross over in that you know what everything really uh, is it just vibration and light you know that matter doesn't really exist and that things are connected and that there's parallel realities and like you know and that like panpsychism is another thing in science that's sort of recently well I don't know how recently but I think it's similar to like animism that everything's alive like uh, some leading scientists are talking about the sun being a conscious a conscious being and but it's like okay so our scientists are saying this now but this is something that our ancestors <laughs> have known for a very long time it's a fascinating <laughs> idea that we already knew everything but sort of forgot a lot of it <laughs> yeah yeah kind of. <laughs> well that, i mean there's always new like heights of understanding isn't there and, and knowledge and what have you maybe but, just yeah. concentrated on small parts of it yeah. yeah but I, I do feel like that it is a remembering when you sort of step you know when you're on this kind of path of, of discovery with these things it's more like oh yeah no I, I think I knew that already you know like on, on a soul level like sometimes when I read something <clears throat> that really resonates I get like shivers like and, and that for me that's like okay that's something true I've even remember you know I've remembered it um because, you know, the other thing that science tells us is how much is stored in our DNA, you know, like the memories that, are, that we carry on a cellular level, you know, it's, there's something really amazing with that. I mean, I think, for me, I think it's, there's even more than that, that science doesn't understand as yet. But, you know, just to consider that, what we carry, what memories we carry on, on a cellular level in our DNA is... It's fascinating, isn't it? You know. And how, how does this affect your music? Has it changed the way you create music? I mean, obviously you're doing the sound installation stuff, or the, you know, um, you know, re recording being in nature. But that's, I mean, imagine that's a different thing. I see you still got the guitar behind yeah. you. So when you play guitar, do you hear different things in the resonances of the notes, or does it make you play in a different way, or go on different journeys? I don't know how much that's changed actually because I think that's something that I've always sort of written music very intuitively and I mean obviously you have to practice to a degree so you can get like you know technical ability to a certain point but then after that I kind of feel like it's what I've always tried to do and what I continue to do is just sort of let go of my mind try and write from a different space so in that regard I don't think that's changed I think maybe my understanding of those processes that I was already doing has has changed. Because, yeah, like, you know, when I was in band practices and stuff, you know, sometimes when you're figuring out songs, because it's kind of like, you know, I think it was, it was Nick Cave that says it's like taming a beast, you have this amazing jam, and then it's like, but how, what do we do with this <laughs> now? <laughs> but when you're kind of working that out, it's like you can hear straight away oh no you're in your head like too much in your head you're too much in your mind and then it doesn't you kind of lost the magic of it a little bit mm -hmm. um so so I don't think that's really changed too much I mean I think the other thing as well about playing music that most musicians really understand about energy and almost like telepathy because I feel like when you when you've played, I mean, I'm sure, I don't know if you've had this because you've been playing with your bandmates for such a long time. I mean, 
you get in, you sort of totally in sync, aren't you? I know it's because you've practiced a lot, but I feel I feel like there's more that's going on other than just that you've practiced a lot. Because I've had it with bandmates where you know we barely needed to speak because we'd understand, <laughs> like we just know, you know what we were thinking, especially about the music. You know, like just look at each other and we'd be like, yeah, no, that's not right, or like, yeah, yeah, that's really amazing. Um, yeah, so, which, yeah, which is kind of a really a great way of explaining the, the, the shamanism as well. It's there is a language that's beyond language, isn't there? Um, which maybe that's a sense what what, is, what you're tuning into. Well, I think you know, so many people that wouldn't you know even go near that label. So many great musicians and artists and poets are all sort of tapping into that, like an otherness, aren't they? And mm. it's the art and the music and whatever is all an expression of that um i mean i i kind of think as well it is just about you know connecting to your heart space as well and that most sort of incredible music is is coming from you know mainly from here or or mind heart coherence or whatever and that you can feel that in good music i mean i suppose we all have different tastes so different things resonate with us all and that's amazing that 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 is the case but like stuff that I really love you know it, I you feel it and you can't like yeah you can't really articulate why you love something so much <laughs> yeah. just because you've sort of had this experience this felt experience from the from the music I think it's interesting about music I don't know so much about this yet but like you know the the frequency that most music is recorded on. And I mean, I think it was something like Bob Marley was on too and, and other musicians and like sound artists are now like the actual Hertz and stuff like that, that the radio set to and different speakers isn't the best one that sort of, that our body responds to. It's a different frequency that our body responds to. And you can hear that, can't you? Like in tinny uh, sort of pop music. I mean, for me, when I hear that sort of stuff, I just, I want to either get out of the space or turn it off as quickly as yeah, yeah. possible. Um, but then, there's, you know, there's like a whole science. Again, it's like I've only been playing with these things more intuitively, but like, you know, certain notes and certain frequencies that sort of resonate more with different parts of your bodies or different parts of your chakra system. Um, but that's like really ancient knowledge as well, like an understanding of, of these things as well as... <coughs> like patterns and ratios, like some people say certain Beethoven pieces have sort of like, I've got these really beautiful mathematical patterns that's kind of like, um, like a sacred geometry to the the sound. And I mean, I don't really know a lot about that yet. I mean, I hope to learn more about it, especially with the sound, but I'm kind of trusting what I'm doing at the moment that, you know, coming from an intuitive space and I'll learn more as I as I go along but I do think there's something really interesting to the frequency that we listen to to music as well and how we hear it um yeah I think I think it's subconscious I think people like Beethoven or or some somebody making music 2000 years ago weren't doing it in mathematical formulas they fit into mathematical formulas but they were just making the music that was just right for that that moment of time weren't they well, they're tapping into like a higher consciousness somehow mm. through getting into mm. these states like, well that that's that's the interesting thing because that's the joining point between shamanism and music isn't it they're both tapping into a higher state in this yeah. sense yeah yeah but i think it's it's about finding that balance of like yeah tapping you know tapping in because even the word higher, lower isn't necessarily bad, but like, um, I think it's important to be really, to be balanced and to be really grounded, you know, because um, we need to have our feet on the earth as much mm. as we need our heads in the clouds. So it's kind of <laughs> <Yeah>. like, <laughs> you know, like, I don't mean to say this with any uh, judgment, although it might sound like it, but like, you know, a lot of people that are in spiritual communities, would be cr criticized because they sort of seem a bit floaty or flaky or whatever and I think it's and that's maybe that's that's just where they're at on there in that moment of time and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that but I think there's judgment around some spiritual 
communities because they're just it's, there's distortions within those as much as there's distortions everywhere and in, in the world but I think that sometimes when people are more like that sort of more floaty all the time maybe they just need to be a bit more like be a bit more balanced a bit more grounded a bit more like you know connecting to the earth or their breath or whatever so that they can um because I think it's not about escaping this reality to go to higher realms. It's about bringing through different things, you know, you know, to be here more now, or, you know, like with music, especially like there's definitely, you know, I know it's cliche, but there is something really healing about it, whether that is the vibrations and the frequencies that hit you're so, you know, certain parts of your body, but like on an emotional level, you know, when you hear something that's really beautiful and, you know, people cry and all sorts, then it's like, that's, that can be a release of something that you're carrying and that healing happens that way or by wildly dancing or, or moshing, you know, <laughs> like you still, it's the same, you know, it's a similar mm -hmm. thing, isn't it, you know? I, I'm trying I don't want to I don't mean to focus on it too much but like I'm aware that there's a whole big thing with shamanism and cultural appropriation and stuff like that so it's not like um <clears throat> so even just using that word I sometimes think is that the right word to even mm. be using I, I don't know but then I just think yeah we need I want to respect the heritage of all different cultures but remember that we have this heritage but we've mm. You know. Just reconnecting our own heritage, but probably yeah. back to the Druids in Anglesey or yeah, yeah. before that, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm getting, I don't know as much about that yet, but I've just ordered some books about like Celtic culture and fairies, stuff like yeah. that. I'm going to go away but with the fairies. <laughs>